Good morning, everyone. I'm Lindsay Polloway, Executive Director at Atlantic Live, and I'm delighted to welcome you to Higher Education at a Crossroads in Atlantic Next America Forum. President Trump has called education the civil rights issue of our time and said to a joint session of Congress last month, we must enrich the mind and souls of every American child. What exactly will be on the president's agenda for higher ed is not yet clear. What is clear is that there are considerable challenges in the higher ed world. We'll be talking about those this morning. Who can afford to go to school? Who ends up graduating? And how do students make sure the time they spend in school is really worth it? Among the people we'll hear from today, community college presidents, university presidents, and local and national policymakers. And we'll ask them what they think the priorities for higher ed should be in this new administration. Before we begin the conversation, I want to thank the Lumina Foundation and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation for making our morning together possible. On that note, it gives me real pleasure to invite Daniel Greenstein, Director of Post-Secondary Success at the Gates Foundation, to say a few words. Dan? Thank you. Good morning. So it's a privilege to be able to join you today uh, and to share just a few thoughts. Um, special thanks to our partners at The Atlantic for all of their efforts to raise awareness of these critical issues. Um, thanks to good friend and colleague, uh, Jamie Marisotis, and his team at Lumina. Um, we're proud to partner with Lumina on this and um, actually many other uh, initiatives. So the discussions we're going to have today, they're timely and they're urgent. Our nation faces an opportunity gap, and it's at a critical point in its history. That gap represents a disconnect between the promise and the reality of the American dream. A sense among many of our fellow citizens that they have been let down by our economic and social institutions. That sense is driving anxiety and discontentment that is showing up in our politics and our public discourse today and likely ongoing. This sense of disappointment is targeted as much at higher education as it is at other of our nation's civic institutions. Nearly all of the new post-recession jobs require education after high school, but too many people don't have access to that education. Today, a high-income student is seven times more likely to have a degree by the age of 24 than a low-income student, seven times more likely. And college attainment gaps by race and ethnicity haven't budged in decades. And in some cases, they're widening. And both of these trends contribute directly to growing inequality in this country. The ra reality behind these numbers, it's simple and it's stark. Our prevailing model of higher education in this country, it's just not sustainable. It prizes exclusion at a time when competitiveness is all about inclusion. It's resistance to measures of institutional effectiveness and efficiency in an era of tightening resources and growing and very reasonable questions about value. I read where 90% of college and university presidents recently surveyed believe that Americans just don't understand the purpose of higher education. And I think that's just an unfortunate and consequential misreading of public knowledge and public sentiment. Our enterprise faces a need for fundamental change, like virtually every knowledge-based enterprise has faced in the past generation. Think of healthcare. Think of financial services. Our friends at The Atlantic will tell you about journalism. So change of this magnitude, it demands that we question fundamental assumptions about our students and what works for them, that we challenge conventional wisdom about the pace of change, and that we push back on individual and institutional inertia. It means being accountable to our constituents, our students, their employers, our local, state, and federal funders. It means being accountable for the tangible value that we add in higher education, like Paul Quinn and National U Lewis Universities have done. It means using data to design stronger and clearer pathways to a credential for all our students, like Delaware State University has done. It means taking students who have the drive but not the grades to succeed and working intensively with them as they're doing at Johnson C. Smith University. And it means redefining prestige, not in terms of the students that we in exclude, 
but in terms of the students we include and how well they do, as at Georgia State University and Florida International. So after nearly five years leading the foundation's post-secondary success work, I've come to conclusion that the central challenge in helping more Americans realize their educational dreams, it's not one of skill. We have a great deal of knowledge about what works for today's students, and we're learning more every day. Rather, I see two fundamental obstacles to our progress. One is access to that knowledge of what works. It's not consistency, consistently available to campuses and system leaders, especially those at the less well-resourced institutions. And in an era of open educational resources and the internet, that doesn't make any sense to me. It's inexcusable. And the second and perhaps larger hurdle to clear, I think, is the will to change. Even where there is movement towards new ways of serving our students, those efforts can be stranded in the land of the one-off pilot project because some of the fundamental rules of the game, including and maybe especially funding streams, accountability measures, faculty prerogative about how we teach and who we teach, can reinforce old ways of doing things. So that's why our foundation is building a coalition of the willing, forming partnerships with campuses, with systems that are taking steps to transform themselves in the interests of their students, in the interest of their students' success and of equitable education attainment. And it's also why we're partnering, and our partners are engaging with state and federal policymakers on issues like sim simplifying federal aid for low-income students and improving data and information about student outcomes. Progress is slow, change is hard, but it's discernible. And every day it seems like there are new points of light illuminating what we can and must accomplish to bridge opportunity gaps in this country. So coming to, away from today's succession, successions, I challenge each of you to identify one assumption or piece of conventional wisdom about higher education if you're at a college or a university at your institution that should be questioned, or at least investigated further, just one. Because it matters. It matters to the person who is first in their family to attempt college. It matters to the working adult. It matters to the student parent. And ultimately, it matters to all of us. So let's get to work. Thank you very much.